I hope everyone can see my screen. That's kind of the sentence of a year. Uh, yeah, welcome to your webinar about the uh, data anal analytics for all and how to support your data uh, and, and uh, enable a zero copy on your data, all powered by Apache Arrow, Arrow Flight, and Dribbler. Just a, a short agenda, like introduction. I want to just start with back to basics before we start with talking about the Dremio day uh, and then showing how to use Dremio, what is the new data tier, how you can use Apache Iceberg, uh, Nessie, Apache Arrow, and then we will just finish uh, with QA phase. Yeah, just a short introduction again. Uh, Radovan just uh, told you my name is Victor, I'm a solutions architect at Dremio. Almost a year and a half here, drain you if you if you want to find me. Uh, here's uh, the, the contact information, my email, uh, LinkedIn, just scan it. And just like about myself, uh, I, I love travel. And you know, pre COVID time, you can see some countries which I already visited. So if you have like a kind of a tip for me uh, after the COVID and post COVID time, just let me know which country I should visit it. As you can see, the North Hemisphere is pretty good covered, but the South Hemisphere is still uh, open. So feel free to reach out to me and tell me which countries are best. Good. Now uh, let's start with the basics. Uh, so what we talk, what what I would like to talk uh, uh, about, and why Apache Arrow is so interesting, especially interesting in context of uh, analytics, uh, in context of big data and how that can help uh, every one of us just to analyze the data at scale and without copying the data. So first of all, what I would like to start is uh, like, okay, we have our raw base data, we have our column oriented data, and the use case where, where to use what is pretty obvious. So actually for OLTP, you should use the raw base data because it's write intensive format. And for all up, uh, you should use like columnar based data because it's read intensive format and as, as you saw probably in the last couple of years uh, the uh, um, project as an apache or c or parquet have arised just to help you to store data and and <clears throat> in more effectively way and just select the data more effectively if you if you have like your ltp system or your ltp data and csv json is a representation of ltp and, and uh, you have my, MySQL or some relational database system which are based on OLTP for write intensive uh, um, tasks. Uh, but why why it's actually so uh, crucial to 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 have um, column oriented data for uh, analytical purposes? So let's assume you have a table, you have a CSV file, uh, and you would like just to run on top of that CSV file a SQL statement, and you would like just to select name and city from that file. Uh, in a classical way, if, if you will have your CSV file, you will scan the whole file just to get the information. So, which means the memory represent representation will be uh, completely the same uh, 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 what what you have on your disk. In terms of uh, column oriented, uh, and, and let's just take Apache Parquet, uh, uh, you will scan only two columns. So that's just to show you how you can just save at the beginning your time, your uh, resources, and and your money maybe as well, because we don't need to provision the same amount of your uh, um, uh, server and, and machines uh, just to select the same data. And if you will go to the next step and say what is usually, we, we just want to filter the data, and we would like just to put, put some where clauses like age, and what we see <clears throat> in, in uh, um, Parquet, or like on a column oriented, what, what you can do, you can just uh, enable partition. And what we have here is we enable partition, which is just simple folder, which means if you have your Spark process, that Spark process will create a folder, and that is like uh, an H number, and we will write inside that uh, uh, folder uh, just uh, some information. And by selecting that data, what we have, we have partition pooling, which means in uh, in a clause where h equals 22, we are not going to, to look inside of the, uh, folder 90. We will just look in folder 22, and we will select only two columns. And that's kind of a way how you can even optimize uh, the selection of your data. And the next kind of uh, big advantage of column-oriented data is if you if you're saving that information on disk. So let's assume you have your CSV file. It will remain the same kind of what, what you have uh, uh, in memory. So you have all your columns, all, all your rows. 
but uh, uh, by column oriented, you have uh, the way the easier way just to compress your data, which uh, uh, represents a kind of a smaller size of your data. As you can see on on column city, you have only one entry New York because you don't need just to repeat that all the time. It will just save like all, once on on the disk. Well, Parquet is uh, a pretty comfortable to so store information to select the information on disk um, and uh, there's but one big challenge. So for instance, you would like just to read that information. You will read that information from a, uh, a lot of uh, kind of engines which, which are able to read the information. And what is happening is uh, usually they need to decentralize that data and lot that in memory. And the representation of that data in memory is again raw based. So every benefit what you had on Apache Parquet uh, kind of disappeared at that situation because you need again just to go and process your data in memory raw based. And it's why actually Wes McKinney, uh, uh, the um, inventor of Pandas, and uh, Jacques Naidoo, the founder of Dremio, uh, they just developed Apache Aero format, which actually allows to keep your data, which is uh, column oriented uh, on disk, to read that in memory without deserialization and keep it columnar in memory as well. And to keep all benefits what you have uh, on, on disk with Parquet in memory. So uh, as, as you can see, probably that a lot of uh, technologies nowadays using Arrow. Uh, Arrow is open source uh, and uh, you, you can find uh, Arrow in PyArrow, in Spark, in Dremio, uh, in all other technologies out there who, who relies on analytics because Arrow uh, enables you just to go through a huge amount of data and uh, be able to analyze that data uh, in a more efficient way. And maybe the last piece uh, of that puzzle is how how you would like to transport the data. And as you know, like we have ODBC, JDBC, and they have been invented in I don't know late nineties, at the time where we didn't have like that amount of data. We didn't have uh, internet, and we didn't have a massive file processor. And uh, the data what we have nowadays is is kind of a big challenge for ODBC, JDBC. And what we actually have, we have gRPC protocols, which uh, have been created for internet era. And to process that huge amount, amount of data, uh, we need just to switch to more uh, modern protocols like gRPC. And Apache uh, Arrow uh, provides Apache Arrow Flight. Uh, it's, it's just a simple protocol based on gRPC and allows you just to read the data in massive parallel processing, columnar oriented. And you can just uh, write a simple SQL, flight SQL, uh, to to uh, uh, get data in, in that situation, like from Dremio. And you can just uh, um, imagine if you have your data somewhere, I don't know, in object store, such as S3, Azure Data Data Storage, Hadoop, uh, and it's all parquet. Dremio will read that information uh, in columnar oriented way. Uh, uh, we will kind of calculate in columnar oriented way and we will provide you example. Uh, uh, the the uh, results of that calculation to your tool uh, via Apache Aero Flight columnar. So the whole process will be columnar. The data will be stored columnar. The data will be processed columnar, and it's a kind of very efficient way how you can analyze the data. Apache Aero Flight, as of now, is uh, uh, available for Jupyter or like for Python, for R, for all that tools. So if you if you have uh, any data science uh, initiatives. So just uh, take a look about uh, for Arrow and for Aeroflight to have uh, kind of a different experience on uh, analyzing the data. Uh, and before we jump to Dremio, so let me just uh, kind of uh, explain what is the, the challenge at the moment. So you probably know that, okay, we know at the moment how to land now data in the data lake in some object store. Because it's cheap, it's flexible. I don't need to to have like a huge uh, team to to maintain that uh, system uh, in in a cloud. It's even uh, serverless, so I don't need to to care about that at all. And this is the easiest way just to lend our data. And then the next step is okay. The data itself uh, probably is too big or doesn't make sense. I need to kind of prepare that data. And usually, what people are doing, uh, they're loading that in some data warehouse in, in some cloud data warehouse or on-prem data warehouse and transforming that all data in some star schema 
and building on top cubes, data mods, BI extracts to accelerate the access or to prepare some specific access for a specific uh, uh, domain or data domain. And the result, it's, uh, it's, it's very time consuming. Uh, there is no self-service, so if, if you have a con consumer from a BI tool, from data science tool, so it's not easy just to say, okay, I have my data in the lake, so how can I can I just uh, kind of change that data or prepare that data for my personal use case because I need that in additional, uh, in a different aggregation state or I need that some additional attributes. And uh, it's it's not cheap, right? So if you will just compare with TCO on, on that kind of a system, you will see that uh, this approach is very costly. Uh, but if we will just step back and see what is actually happening right now on on the uh, on the market and on the technological perspective, is that we started all with data warehouses and Hadoop uh, until 2015, where everyone was uh, kind of saying you need collocated data. Therefore, uh, the result was SQL data storage on data warehouse or on Hadoop like Spark SQL data and storage. They've been all collocated, all tied together and uh, uh, coupled together. And that causes some problem in terms of sc scalability, in terms of cost as well. Therefore, you see some ways of cloud data warehouse which uh, are able to, um, yeah, to separate uh, SQL data and storage. So you, you can just uh, lis uh, uh, listen to all the cloud data warehouse uh, vendors, they're gonna tell you, okay, now you're able just to put your data in some storage as tree, and then our data will be processed uh, via SQL in our cloud data warehouse. Uh, but again, it's not what we will say, the data is free. Data is still kind of locked to some kind of an engine. And uh, the last year, 2020, is the rise of cloud data late. And cloud data lakes are able to provide you a separation, not just only of storage, but separation of compute and data, which means the data itself will become uh, an independent tier. So data itself is an independent object which can be placed on every storage. Uh, so it can be on S3, it can be on Hadoop, if, if you have a parquet file, for instance. And because you have that kind of constellation parquet in S3 or uh, Azure Data Lake storage, you can process that data from a different uh, um, uh, engines, such as Dremio, Spark, Dask, and so on. So you're not um, kind of uh, locked to a specific uh, um, engine, uh, and, and you can just uh, start uh, analyzing your data, maybe with a tool which, which is not even an inventor. Just uh, imagine tomorrow you will get something very cool uh, uh, analytical uh, tool and you can just use it on top of your data because data itself will be uh, liberated. And so uh, this is some kind of a new paradigm what we have at the moment on cloud data lakes. So the data itself will become independent, independent here. And here's a really interesting quote from Werner Vogel CTO from Amazon, who just said that the data lake uh, and data is stored is an open format. So to make it easy in the future and right now, just analyze your data and, and just to, to keep it open and possible to analyze with a tool which uh, or that don't even exist yet. So very interesting uh, uh, quote from uh, Werner. So just keep that in mind, keep uh, uh, your data uh, open for uh, all possible tools on, on, uh, on the market. So let, let me switch uh, uh, to Dremio and explain you just a bit what is Dremio, what uh, can do Dremio, what uh, Dremio is capable of. So first of all, uh, Dremio started in 2015 uh, and um, in a stealth mode, then uh, uh, the product was developed 2018, started like commercial uh, um, activities on the market. You can see some customers, but the most important thing, I think, from a technical perspective, is that uh, Dremio and Jack Nadu is uh, the original co creator with Bess McKinney. And everything what you will see in Dremio uh, is based on L. Uh, so, like reading of information, massive parallel processing of information, execution of uh, calculation based on Arrow and Gendiva. And even like if you want to get data. Who drain your, uh, you can use Apache or Flight. So this is all based on that. Probably the, the uh, challenge is already known. We have our data on the lake, so we know how to land the data, we know how to prepare and queue your data. But then, uh, how, how, 
any data analyst or data scientist is able to consume the data. So data lake does not speak as well. Data lake is not able to provide like kind of semantic layer, so I'm able just to prepare my data uh, and uh, data lake is not very uh, speedy. So the, the performance on, on data lake may be not satisfying from a from user experience. And as, as I showed before, yes, we can build a data warehouse on top, uh, but that will not uh, uh, liberate the data. The data will be captured and unlocked to, to some specific technology. And this is not what we want to have uh, on our, with our data. And finally, that's kind of the idea. So why not just to keep your data uh, as independent here on, on your lake and put some uh, um, engine, in, in our case, Dremio, to be able to analyze. So you can run your queries from your Tableau, Power BI, from your Jupyter, from your R script, through Dremio to your data lake. And Dremio itself does not contain any data except the metadata. So your all data will reside all the time in the lake. And here is just a simplified architecture uh, overview. You have your uh, data consumers at the top, and then Drainio is like a compute engine in between, and your data is on the lake, and you can just run your queries. To accelerate your business, to give uh, your uh, business users a self-service, to give your data analysts uh, uh, an easy way to analyze the data, and a speedy way to analyze the data without build, building some data mods, some queues, and so on. And because we're using Arrow, you don't need to uh, um, a huge amount of, like in that case, EC2 or VM instances in the cloud because uh, Arrow will keep your uh, memory footprint more efficient compared to all based execution. Uh, so what, what is actually the philosophy of Dremio is what we call, we want to build an open architecture for data analytics without any kind of lock-in. Uh, so if you will see like, okay, what do we have? I have my my storage, my data lake storage, which can be S3, LLS, HDFS, and so on. I'm, as a customer, able to define what is a format type, like parquet, JSON, CC. Uh, the next step, and I, I'm going to talk about the table representation on, on the next slide about Apache Icebook and Delta Lake, but that is kind of a next step uh, to uh, be able to, uh, to have uh, capabilities, what you have in a data warehouse, uh, in terms of deleting, updating the data, and so on. And finally, if I have that construct underneath, uh, I can put all the different engines like streaming services, Kafka Flink, which are able to write the information to the lake, or my uh, analytical ETL services, Spark, uh, EMR, and so on. And Dremio is for queries. That's kind of a very um, important part. So Dremio is not for ETL, Dremio is not for streaming, Dremio is for queries. So you have, you have your BI tool, you have your data science tool, and just use it to query the data. Now I'd like to just to jump into Dremio and show you what is actually Dremio and how you can use Dremio. So first of all, Dremio provides a very uh, intuitive UI, which means uh, every user can use it. Uh, you don't need to to uh, be very technical, so it's not like a, a terminal CLI, or it's a kind of a notebook. So you can just go to Dremio, you can just log in, and what you will see, you will see Dremio. Uh, let me just uh, uh, get you for the uh, UI. On the left side, I see like data lakes. Uh, here, Azure Data Lake Storage, S3, ECS, Glue Data Catalog, and it's very easy to add one. I can just go to the plus symbol, and I can just pick one, let's say here, Azure Storage, it's Gen 2, I will provide name, account name, shared access key to connect. And if i done that, I can go here to one, Azure Data Lake Storage, I have container Dremio, and then I have all my kind of files, uh, my uh, parquet files, my CSV, which, which I'm allowed to analyze. Uh, in case you have one database, so you can just go here and you see here Postgre database and uh, similar, uh, we will get like a public schema in all tables, what we uh, would like just to analyze here. And same procedure, you want to add one, go here, choose one, SQL Server, type information, and you get access to the data. Uh, main focus, again, our data gravity should be on the lake because we're talking about uh, like terabytes and petabytes and therefore store your data on the lake and then you, you're able to analyze the data and finally uh here on the site is uh, uh spaces and spaces actually like namespace or like a folder structure which is able to 
organize everything. So if you have your organization or your projects or your product, you could you can create a space like here's solutions architecture, and then I can go to a subfolder Victor, and then I have my um, data set which uh, I'm allowed to analyze. And finally, what I have is my own space for some preliminary uh, calculation for uh, or for for even upload the data. What I can do, I can go to the uh, here symbol uh, cloud browse and go to dimensions and I have like a CSV file, you know, like all the time you have your lake, you have your database, but sometimes you have your some information on, on, on a local drive. And now what I'm able, I'm able just to upload that information to uh, my data lake. So data is now not uploading to Dremio, it's uploading through Dremio in, in the lake. And in Dremio, I have only the metadata information about. And uh, what, what I can do right now is I can search through a catalog because on every data set I can create wiki and cats and that information is, is, is stored in the catalog. So now I can just go and I would like just to search for New York City tricks. And as you can see, I've got a couple of results and search goes on data set name, attribute and uh, names and text. And now I'm just jumping to New York City. I have here that catalog. And here I have wiki with some kind of description, dimension measures. It says volume one billion records on the lay. The information about, about fields provided automatically by Dream. And what I can do, I can type here some, some kind of text. Let's assume the 4711 is an ID from a Jira. And I'm a data engineer. I created that data set. Now I can call my colleague from data science or data analyst and say, OK, search for ID from Jira. And he's able just to find it. So that's the easiest way just to collaborate and uh, share the information in one organization. Let's just go back to the data. So what we have here is kind of a preview of the data, uh, and I can just see, okay, vendor ID, pickup data, and so on. And we saw in the wiki it's about one billion rows. So we can just easily prove it, go and run here a simple count. And as you can see, we have one billion twenty-five million rows. So now I would like just to start with the perspective of uh, data engineer, uh, of data uh, analyst. And data analyst uses uh, usually some BI tool. And as you can see, I have already integration with Power BI and Tableau. And so you can actually connect every tool which uh, is able to speak ODBC, JDBC, or Flight. Now I'm connecting the, uh, uh, the Tableau just to connect from Tableau to the data lake through uh, Dremio, because Dremio itself is, is not uh, uh, storing any, any information. And now, so, Myself. And what you see is New York City trips with all uh, same fields what we saw in Dremio right now. Now we can just uh, drag and drop here the information. See, yeah, we got 1 million 25, 1 billion 25 million rows. And uh, what is actually the standard way of analyzing data? Yeah, it's just interactively pick up some kind of measures and uh, KPIs. And as you can see, okay, one couple of hundred millions each year drive uh, uh, trips in New York City. And what we would like to have is an additional KPI, maybe tip amounts. And on tip amounts, I don't, don't want to have a sum. Instead, I would like to have an average. And you can see that's kind of interactive uh, speed of uh, uh, Tableau on, on, on huge amount of data. And you can, if you want, drill in, just go to a quarter in a year, just to see like, okay, how many millions uh, uh, each quarter per year have been driven. Or you can just go even down to the day level and see like how many trips each day have been made on, on, on uh, New York City trips. So again, one billion rows, Tableau desktop, no extract, direct live query, from Tableau via Dremio to your data. And we can just go back to Dremio and see what is actually happening here. And his tab drops. On that tab, I have like every query which uh, Dremio uh, processed. And I see New York City, Victor, day, time, and took less than a second. And uh, what you can see that uh, it came via ODBC and here's SQL statement what Tableau sent to Dremio. So again, data lake does not speak SQL, Tableau speaks SQL. Dremio translates uh, between Tableau and Battle. Uh, how we were able just to uh, accelerate that huge amount of uh, rows, uh, and there are 
four main mechanisms. So one of them is uh, there is a distributed system, which means you can just run uh, multiple executor nodes and one field will be uh, distributed to multiple executor nodes. And uh, the processing done is by arrow. Also the, the uh, uh, processing of SQL done by arrow and uh, Gandiva. And uh, additional to that, what you can see is that accelerated by a reflection, which means I can put on top of my data some sort of a kind of a hybrid between index and materialized view. So reflection is a, a optimize, optimized re representation of a data. So we will just create kind of a parquet and save it on the lake and be able just to uh, get that information on the fly, which means I have my New York City and I can just go here and create some reflection with two dimensions, with uh, one measure, sort and partition. And the query planner inside of a drain is able to understand, okay, for that kind of SQL statement, I have a reflection, so I can just send it to reflection and to have a sub-second uh, response. So similar to what, what you have on index of one database state. And uh, we, uh, uh, we have like two types of reflection, aggregate reflection and raw reflection. So aggregate reflection is similar like to all of you. And raw reflection is like, okay, I know that I would like just to uh, select following kind of a, uh, uh, columns and uh, imagine that is an OLTP data database and you are not allowed just to go there and, and just select the huge amount of data because DBA usually not allowing that they saying okay or uh, just run your ETL process in the night in the night and then you can just offload our batch job the whole data in terms of trade you can just here select what you need and every uh, analytical workload will be uh, sent to raw reflection instead of sending to the database table. So that's the easiest way how to uh, create a workload isolation concept. Or maybe uh, like a different perspective, you got your data provided by Spark, and usually the date is partitioned by, by date. But you know that every query or like most of the queries, they do not select the date at all, but they select in vendors. So you can just here click on uh, vendor ID and Dremi will kind of repartition re everything for you. And you can just uh, accelerate your queries. So let me just cancel here on, on that side with uh, uh, topic reflections. Maybe just one on the one thing, like do I need to put everywhere reflection inside of a Dremi to have high speed? The answer is no. On the specific places you should put reflections to, to have uh, uh, better experience uh, like for dashboarding or for some kind of processing within Dremio. And now we, I would like just to show you a second uh, perspective. Uh, so I would like just to switch from uh, analyst to engineer. And for that purposes, I would like to search for uh, file employee and present you how you can use Dremio for uh, building a semantic layer, which means you don't need to copy your data. You can just uh, kind of build your data hub or data domain hub on top of the data. So let's assume we have like employees, which is a parquet file on the lake. So we have employee ID, first name, last name, email. So what I see that email is actually not in proper format. Now I can just go here and change uh, the case, go to a lower case, and you see like, okay, I'm changing the data. At uh, what, what I'm missing is uh, uh, a domain. So I can go here and say, calculate build. And say concat as a function and concat to strings, which is email and domain. So it looks uh, fine. So that's kind of a format of an email. And the next step is the phone number. We are not allowed to share the phone number of our employees. We can just go here and call extract. And now I'd like to just to extract the area code. And now you can see I extracted the area code from a phone number. The phone number I can just drop because I don't need it anymore. And the last action here on that table is that we need department names. But as you can see, we have only ID. So we can just go and join the information. And let's go to the custom join search and we will search for departments. Now what I see uh, departments uh, information is not on the lake. It's uh, on a Postgre database. So we can just pick up Postgre database, click on the next. And something happened. Let me repeat it. Department. 
exactly. And now I can just say, okay, department ID equals department ID, apply, go to end, and what we can see, you see both department IDs, so we don't need a double, we can just drop one. And actually, uh, we don't need like all departments, we would like to keep only shipping, sales, and IT, apply, and we will save it. And let's uh, call it uh, one. And now what I can do, I can go to a graph and I can see the lineage. I see my PostgreSQL department, I see my data lake with employees, and now I have my web step one where I joined the both uh, tables. And you might saw that already in some mapping of, of ETL trees. Uh, the main difference is here that we didn't copy the data. So the data itself resides in employees and departments, and that step one is only uh, uh, a virtual representation. We call it a virtual data set. And virtual data set is not a data copy. It's only, let me show you, it's a SQL statement. So when I was here uh, choosing like Concat and adding like Dremio, I, I was actually creating an SQL statement. And if you're more familiar with SQL, you can just write directly SQL here save it and you see like we change directly in, in uh, here in Dream. And what you can do actually in terms of semantically, you can take that web step one, which was like the resulting uh, uh, um, table of you for your uh, next kind of a transformation step. And let's assume I didn't, I wouldn't like to have an SSM here. So I can just drop it and I can save it. And let's call it web final. And see that we are able just to build a semantic layer without copying the data. And that's kind of a, a, a strong uh, proposition, value proposition of Drainy and Apache Arrow because we are able to read the information from Lake, which is in Parquet file, process that information uh, arrow based. And uh, me as a data engineer, I don't need to explain my uh, to uh, my colleagues in data governance why did I create it like 10 additional layers of data. It's all kind of a virtual. And uh, if if employee will leave the company, I need just to go to employees. I will delete the uh, entry of my employees, and the calculation will be done automatically for me because I need just to run kind of web step one or web final. And what is interesting for uh, data scientists or analysts, they they don't need to understand the whole complexity behind that. They're gonna get like access to this web final, and they're gonna choose it uh, uh, to, to, to analyze the data. And let me go to, uh, in that case, to um, Jupyter. What I have here is I'm connecting to Dremio.org, to the same uh, test cluster, and I'm using PyODBC. And now I'm able just to run here a simple query where I have SQL, I'm loading my SQL via uh, pandas in the data frame, and then I have everything how, how I'd like to work with my data. Now I can just run. And as you can see, I, I got the whole information. If, if the data engineer, for instance, will see, okay, credit card information shouldn't be shouldn't be shared. Everything what you need to do is to go to Dremio, edit original SQL, remove the field, save it, go back to Jupyter, run it again. And as you can see, credit card information is going. So no alter table, rebuild table, reload table. So that's something what you don't need to do. So time to insight uh, is uh, a bit different. Even in time, uh, uh, data bringing is much quicker. So if you as a data engineer spending 80% of your time for data bringing, maybe that's a kind of a tool uh, what you can try out uh, to, to uh, save uh, time on data bringing and spend more time on data science. And one thing about the flight, what I presented to you at the beginning, and here's a simple example again in Jupyter, what I have is here, I'm loading like uh, the, uh, from PyArrow uh, flight, and I'm loading the uh, PyODBC as well. And now connecting to my local host in that case and uh, trying to select that via ODBC and via gRPC. And I have SQL, 1 million roles. And now I'm just trying to get that uh, SQL via PyODBC and flight. Just to show you where the difference between them. So same cluster, same SQL queuing, nothing like kind of special. But you can see that PyODBC requires 33 seconds and flight query only two seconds. So that's kind of uh, uh, the way how you can 
select your data, which uh, which is kind of a bit more efficient. Uh, you don't to think about like okay about the amount of data about the PowerDBC and so on. You can easily use by arrow just to select the data from from the data lake for Dremio. Good. So just to summarize on Dremio, Dremio provides you an easy way to access to the lake, uh, easy way to accelerate a huge amount of data and easy way to build a, be a semantic layer your data representation for specific purposes without copying your data. So zero copy of your data. So let me just go back to my presentation and talk uh, a bit about the new data tier. So what, what is actually about the new data tier and what is the current challenge on the data lake, uh, what, what a lot of companies trying to solve. Uh, so that's kind of a, a architecture what we uh, talked about. We have our data lake, S3, LLS, HDFS, Minio, Skeleton, and all the you know, different technologies. Uh, then we have our file formats, Parquet or C, CSV, JSON. And at the top, we have usually some kind of a data lake engine, Drainio, Spark, Hive, Athena, and, and, and uh, some consumers with Jupyter, with Power BI, Tableau. But the challenge is, uh, so how can I actually change the information side of my parquet file? How can I be sure uh, that data is strong consistent? that the information what I'm reading is exactly what ha have been updated in, in, in the last couple of seconds. So actually I can't, it's it's kind of a challenge on the data lake. So the strong consistency, transactions, uh, schema evolution, time travel, it's it's not possible at the moment. And maybe you heard about some projects from Hoodie, from Delta Lake, Databricks and so on, who are trying to, to provide uh, exactly this capability. And uh, a very interesting project is Apache Iceberg. Uh, Apache Iceberg is open table format, uh, which allows to have all these capabilities like transaction time travel. Uh, Apache Iceberg was started by Netflix. Uh, as, as of now, uh, a lot of contributors from Apple, Adobe, Alibaba, LinkedIn, Dremio as well. And this is exactly what gives you an uh, easy way to, uh, to have transactional guarantees on your data lake. And what Dream is uh, trying to provide is uh, so-called kit-like experience and multi-transaction uh, uh, on, on multiple tables. And uh, let me just uh, give you an example on a kit-like because it's a very interesting concept. Uh, all of you know, if you're, if you're writing a code, you, you're just trying to, uh, you have a main branch and then you're uh, trying to build like experiment branch. In that experiment branch, you're coding something, a new feature. And then if you're satisfied, you can just make a kind of pull request and merge request and everything is fine and uh, everything is in the main branch. Now is the question, so why I'm not able to do the same with the data? Why I'm not able just to say, okay, that's my main branch with data. And then I would like just to have some kind of experiment data science, but I don't want to change the whole data. And this is exactly the way how you can do. You can branch, you can tag, uh, and you can merge back. And that's everything what Nessie will provide to you. So Nessie will provide kit like experience of the data uh, and fully transactional consistency across all your application and data on your lake. Uh, here, here are the key features uh, from uh, data tier. So first of all, transactional tables. Uh, Apache Asbot and Delta Lake will give you that uh, possibility to have transactional tables on your data lakes. Uh, and this is a um, kind of a great uh, uh, opportunity to build even better application, analytical application on your data. Uh, it will give you a um, kind of freedom to store your data in, in kind of unlimited way. As, as, as you probably know, at the moment, you need to be careful about the amount of splits and uh, amount um, and what is the size of your table. Uh, and Iceberg will solve all of this. So you can just store as, as big as you want uh, on Apache Iceberg and uh, analyze the data. The email operations, so data modification language, uh, all ANSI SQL supported, uh, just to close that functional gap between uh, data warehouses. So you don't need just to, to say, okay, I, I use the uh, world with data warehouse, databases is database. And uh, on Icebroken Nessie, you can just get all together. So you will have all 
benefits from Lake, and you will uh, get all benefits from Data Warehouse on the next uh, uh, data tier. Internal schema. So you can just uh, um, define internally some schemas on your data so to, to show that from a different perspective. And finally, Git management of the data. So it's even uh, kind of beyond uh, the capabilities what you have on Data Warehouse uh, uh, to, to work with your data. Uh, here, uh, again, just uh, to, to repeat transactional tables, Iceberg Delta Lake, the most known uh, kind of data formats, table formats uh, uh, here in the community. They both will give you transaction consistency, so you can just uh, update your data, and if you read the data, you will see the same data what you just updated. Scalability and performance, uh, uh, very interesting what, what you can just achieve with Iceberg instead of Peel. Uh, parquet and the so traditional warehouse capabilities, right? So insert, absurd, update, delete. So everything uh, what, what you know from, from data warehouse uh, is going to be available with Apache Iceberg. Uh, and uh, you will have like near real time consistency with your data. So uh, data like at scale. Uh, you can write your data, you can think about the streaming uh, uh, kind of analytical use cases and, and deploy everything uh, on, on your data lake. So data lake is not just for um, use cases with attaching data and never changing that data. Data lake uh, is evolving. Data lake uh, making makes uh, data as, as an independent tier and allows you to, to work with your data with all the different technologies, uh, what you can just find in, in the community. Exactly. And, and, and my last slide is about the uh, Nessie. Uh, I, I just mentioned that Nessie will provide a Git-like experience with your data. And here is just a couple of examples like, OK, I can just create a branch. I can work with that branch. Uh, and I can merge the branch. So you, you can uh, do a lot of more with uh, Nessie. Maybe on that uh, place, uh, everyone who would like just to collaborate, uh, very welcome and invited. So uh, please reach out to me if you would like just to get more knowledge about the Nessie because it's uh, something new in the, in the community so and very interesting from prospect from perspective how you can handle your data. Uh, therefore, uh, Contributors are welcome, and let me know if someone would like just to uh, understand more about this. Yeah, so from that one, uh, let's open Q and A phase. If there are some questions, perfect, perfect. So thank you very much, uh, Victor, for.